So if you will, just so I have the correct spelling and pronunciation, pronounce your name for me. Concepcion Quiñones de Longo, uh, sec you, Interim Secretary of Health. Would it be proper to call you uh, Dr. Longo? Yes, that's what everybody calls me. Dr. Longo, okay. So here's how I would like to begin. Uh, Dr. Longo, how many tests are being performed in Puerto Rico every day for COVID-19? Okay. The only laboratory able to perform tests right now is our public health laboratory. It has a capacity from uh, 50 to 100 tests daily. Uh, we may have a search capacity of around 50 more, but it's limited to a top of 100 or 150. Okay. How do you decide who gets tested and who doesn't? Right now, our laboratory is testing uh, tests from uh, emergency room and hospitalized patients, considering that those are the uh, patients that have moderate to severe disease, which uh, are in greater need of therapy, though therapy is started as soon as the physician decides the patient needs therapy because it's a uh, supportive therapy. So the physician should not wait for a positive result to start therapy. That's well known. Uh, we are still not performing in our laboratory tests for ambulatory patients with mild disease. So you are not testing people who have mild symptoms? Okay, that's right. Today we are announcing that we are liberalizing criteria for testing and uh, we, are, uh, uh, we are asking reference laboratories to start testing for patients that are referred by physicians. Remember, you have to have a physician order to have a test done and the physicians should use criteria recommended by CDC, but of course, it's not limited to patients who have traveled or have contact as it was required initially. So it's more liberal. A physician should evaluate a patient and he thinks he needs a test, even if he has only mild symptoms, they should give a, a medical order for the test and that patient should go to a laboratory where the test, uh, the sample will be taken and uh, sent to a reference laboratory. We okay. are today still in the process of working with the logistic because it might be that not all laboratory, clinical laboratories in Puerto Rico are able to collect a specimen. So it may be necessary to determine what, it, this is like what it happened in Sica where we selected several laboratories along the island that were the ones that collected the samples were sent by a carrier to a reference laboratory and that laboratory processed the sample and sent back the results. Okay. For the so people... We will, we will be able, with the uh, assistance of these uh, private laboratories, uh, either clinical or, or reference laboratories, laboratories to do a lot more testing in people with mild disease. Okay, so my understanding is that in order for the private laboratories to test for COVID-19, they need to get the positive control from the health department. And for people watching, positive control essentially enables them to verify that the test they have is the accurate test and they use that positive to control to compare their test to a known positive case. So my question to you, uh, Dr. Longo, is this. When will the Puerto Rico Health Department provide that positive control to laboratories around the island so that they can verify that their test is accurate and begin testing? Let me tell you first one thing. The one who uh, provides the material to validate your system to perform the test is the CDC. Uh, that's why, and this test is usually not performed in multiple clinical laboratories around the island because this is a molecular test and not all laboratories have the capacity to perform it. As a matter of fact, 
as I was telling you, most of the clinical laboratories uh, that participate in this effort will be able to collect the sample and send it to a reference laboratory, like they do to, with many other tests. They collect the sample, send it to a reference laboratory. I'm not giving names because I, I don't want to seem uh, 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 promoting any specific labor, reference laboratory. There are several in the island. It's those reference laboratories which are few in the, in the island that will process the sample. Those are the laboratories that need to validate the test in their laboratories. Some of them are in the process, but those laboratories depend on material provided uh, by a company and it's through uh, uh, allowance of the CDC. And, okay. uh, um, and then they have the ability, some of the reference laboratories right now, to collect the sample and send it to the states and they will process like I, we did with Atlanta before. They send it to their laboratories in the states and then they get the results back in three or four days. So they are able to process samples right now, but not in their laboratories in Puerto Rico, just in their laboratories in the states. One of those reference laboratories is uh, could right now send a sample to California and have the result back in three or four days. Right, but three or four days when you're dealing with an epidemic is a lot of time to waste. So, so my question is, you're now running the department. So we're in a unique situation. Can you hear me? Yes. It looks so like the video. Call, there is another call in this phone. Okay. Please. Looks like the video is frozen. That's not a problem. Okay. Okay, it now you're back. So. Three days for testing can, can okay. be a lot of time to waste. So here, yes. here's my question. You're now running the Department of Health. Yes. There is an, I'm told there is a lab, for example, in Adecibo who can test 200 people a day. And if they can get that positive control and confirm that their test is accurate, they could be up and running and sending you the results. Do you, as the acting Secretary of Public Health, have the ability to say to the CDC, give that to us, give, I, give that to us, and we will verify here on the island to get things up and running. I can request it from the CDC that they get, that I get approval is another thing. Okay. Have you made the request? For that specific laboratory, I don't have the exact information, but I don't think so. Not, not for that one, for all of them. Like, have you requested to get the positive control? Because here's my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you have the positive control so that your Department of Public Health can do testing on the island, correct? Yes, yes. We have our tests validated here, but it's not uh, that we are the ones validating or authorizing other laboratories to perform the test. That is being done by CDC. Understood. But since you have the validation, can you not get the approval from CDC no. to share that validation with other people? I can request. I don't know if they're going to be able to provide us with that authorization. Okay. It's okay. not my decision to authorize any laboratory on the island to perform the test, to validate and perform the test. This I is understand. being controlled by CDC. I understand. I'm, I'm very clear on that. I just want to, before we move on, you know, because a lot of people are reaching out to me saying, David, we can help with the testing. Um, so I, I'm just wondering, can I get a commitment from you here that you will ask CDC for permission to share that validation process with the labs? We okay. are ask, making requests to CDC daily. Uh, they have their process. I cannot vouch for what they will decide. Uh, anything they uh, do uh, provide us where we can enhance our ability to perform tests, we will do. But we are still depending on, on uh, this process. Uh, I know the testing process in the United States in general has been low. Uh, there have been a lot of complaints that you may well know even better than I do of the uh, uh, scarcity of tests all over the states. Uh, 
I wish I could have the decision to do these things on my own, but I'm just uh, somebody under uh, the government that has to follow uh, instructions and work with the resources and the authorization we have. Understood. And I want to be very respectful, but I need a yes or no answer from you. Will you, as the acting secretary of public health, ask the CDC for permission to share the test validation with labs on the island who could get up and running? I, I'm telling you, I can ask. You will. I don't know what uh, uh, what uh, the answer will be. OK, oh, but yes. you will. But you will ask. Hey, OK, I, yeah, I will ask. Okay. Whether okay. I get it, an answer. Uh, okay, no. that's fair. That's fair. I will also call the CDC and I will <laughs> ask them myself. Okay, so let's 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 move on. I had a doctor in Umacao reach out to me. He is from the states and he does telemedicine. And he said, yes. David, I would like to help. I would like to treat patients pro bono. I would like to offer my services, but I have been waiting a year to get approval to practice medicine here. Do you have the ability? To, for example, in Washington state, the governor has relaxed rules to where medical providers from other states can come in to help. Do yes. you have and will you ask yes. that that be done yes. so that people like this doctor can help? Okay, that I can answer. Yes, we do have the licensing board for cessations in Puerto Rico, and we do have uh, uh, what you would say authorization for emergency uh, credentialing of physicians, uh, they have to go through our office of the uh, licensing board. Uh, the uh, Mrs. Norma Torres is the CEO of that office, and they have done that before for Maria or for other uh, emergencies. They, there is a process where they uh, do it uh, uh, quickly, uh, but they still have to present some evidence of their credentials, which I no doubt he most probably have. There is also reciprocity with some states that a physician having a license in state, I uh, can't remember, but it's several states, like they can get a, a speedy uh, process for uh, getting a license in Puerto Rico. The specific details uh, are uh, from the medical licensing board, and right. maybe you can uh, request the information or refer that physician to Licenciada Norma Torres in the uh, medical licensing board. Okay, will, but will you ask the medical licensing board to lift their requirements so that people like this doctor can start practicing for free? I think there is already that list of requirements uh, uh, available where uh, I'm not, I don't have the specific details, but they can uh, access that information no 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 i'm saying i'm saying will you ask them to lift it remove it take that away so that doctors can start can start on what on on uh, telemedicine or general practice of general general practice as well they still there is one thing they still have to go through the licensing board the difference is that they submit a minimal amount of documents for credentialing and the process is much shortened. We use that in Maria and the physicians, but they still have to provide a minimal evidence or document. I okay. think it's two or three documents. Okay. And that's a speedy process where okay. instead of waiting several months, like he, you said he has, I don't know, uh, you can get a license in days. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to tell him. Let me ask you another question. A um, a uh, dietitian on the western side of the island uh, yes. is wondering whether she has a lot of clients who are elderly who yes. she would like to treat, but she's not sure if their insurance will pay for them to receive telemedicine. Does your agency have the ability to ask insurance companies or to require them to pay for people to do telemedicine right now so they don't have to leave their home? Uh, two things. There is a difference between telemedicine and also uh, um, telephone medical advice. Telemedicine, uh, they, we used to have a licensing. You have to request uh, to be in cert a certification. It's not a license. It's a certification to practice telemedicine. 
there was a vote in the legislature, I think it was yesterday or so, so to relax that requirement so that telemedicine could be practiced by uh, physicians. I don't know if it included nutritionists. Uh, but uh, there is still in conversations with the authorities from the government and the medical insurance companies about the process for uh, uh, medic, uh, telephone conferences, which previously where you were not doing in large amounts. Physicians usually do that for free. Uh, patient calls and I answer a consult by phone. Uh, but since now it's going to be a method of following patients, I do understand the need to uh, come to terms on how that is going to be compensated. I don't have a final answer. I think they're dealing with that right now. Okay, let's talk about testing. It's the one of all the questions I got. It's the it's the thing they want to uh, know the most about. So let's go back to this. How many tests are you doing a day? Remind me again. Right now we have the capacity. We are doing now right now 50. 50 a day. Okay. 50 a day now. We can okay. do like 100 and may increase our capacity to 150. We have not gone to that up to that level yet. Uh, Dr. Longo, what 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 is your aim? What are you trying? I mean, 50 sounds so low. I mean, it, it that, sounds so low. So, that, so what, what are you doing to ramp it up? Okay, that's what I was telling you, that we are opening for reference lab to start doing testing. Right, and to, send it, and to send it to the states. I get it. I get or, it. or do it in Puerto Rico if they habilitate their laboratories right. here. Okay. But for example, one of those reference laboratories uh, told us that sending it to the states right now, they could go up to a, to 3,000 daily. Um, I have not corroborated that number, but it means that we'll increase exponentially our capacity for performing tests. But why but can't... In that case, it's sending them to the states. I understand. Why can't you do 500 a day at the public health department? Or 1,000? Okay. Because that's a molecular laboratory. It requires equipment, resources, personnel. We don't have the capacity. We don't have the equipment, the resources, and the personnel. This is a very complex process, molecular process, that requires at least three or four hours. Uh, and if a uh, sample uh, is ruined, you have to start all over the process. Uh, RT-PCR, which is the common name of that test, uh, are very limited. Not every laboratory performs those tests. As a matter of fact, when we have H1N1 in Puerto Rico in 2009, we were not doing that test, and we installed it for influenza at that time. So now we have it for coronavirus also. But it's usually a reference laboratory. It's not performed routine by all laboratories. It requires specific training of the personnel equipment and materials and it's uh, laborious so doing 50 tests a day you're never going to be in the place to do drive-through testing i assume right i mean that's what people keep asking me when are we going to do no, drive-through testing we, no we the only way we could do th drive-through testing if it's necessary which may be I, I don't know uh we would have to send those samples probably to a reference laboratory you are right uh, we are uh, aiming to perform more tests in sick patients that require medical hospitalization or treatment in the emergency room. Those patients that were concerned that will go drive through would be patients that are asymptomatic or have mild symptoms. Uh, in medical terms, they are not our first priority. Our first priority is treating patients that have symptoms and that are sick that may require uh, hospitalization. Now, you and I both know that someone who's asymptomatic can carry the virus and be shedding yes. it as they yes. move about it and, and that kind of stuff. So I, and, I go and ahead. the best way to prevent contagiousness, especially right now where we want to break that, that chain is stay at home and keep your social distance uh, prevention. And prevention is not testing. 
prevention is keeping with the universal precautions of uh, preventing contagious diseases, especially respiratory diseases. The governor of Puerto Rico has been a leader in terms of issuing the strictest curfew compared to any governor or any like anywhere in the United States. So I wonder, did she ask your opinion on how strict the curfew should be? And what did you tell her? I was not the only person involved in that decision. I was part of a group where we had experts in different fields, respiratory people, uh, infectious control, the epidemiologists, and uh, uh, different persons from the uh, agencies, in the, especially health agencies in the government. And that was a uh, recommendation from this group of people for the government. I was not the only one to advise her to do what other countries are saying. Please uh, uh, make uh, prevention measures before the, the disease starts rapid spread uh, uh, across the, the country or the island. So that's what we are trying to do. Uh, now Spain and Italy are saying we wish we had uh, enacted these strict measures of prevention earlier. And we know it will not stop spreading quickly or or totally, but it will slow the spread of the disease, giving us time to be able to provide health services to those that get really sick. You may have known I interviewed Dr. Fernando Cabanillas about a week and a half ago. He had a patient. He asked the health department to test. They said no, they finally did after we did the interview and the patient was positive. Can you help me understand Take me step by step the process by which a practitioner has to go through in order to get their patient tested. Who does the doctor call and who is the person that says, I approve your patient to be tested? Initially, that was through the epidemiologists in the Department of Health. Now, I was telling you that the physician can use his or her medical criteria following certain recommendations and or give a order for the test and send the patient to a lab to have the sample taken and that sample will be processed through a reference laboratory uh, preferably for ambulatory patients with slight symptoms or no disease apparently but it's the physician taking care of that patient the one who has to make a decision. And I do feel or think that those physicians will be prudent enough to send tests for patients or persons that really need it. If you sneeze one time, it's not necessary to have a test. Uh, you really have to have symptoms that that physician considers you are either uh, already sick or at very high risk of getting sick. But yeah. That physician should also orient that person that the first measure, either for preventing spread to your own family, to your, uh, the people you work with, is being isolated. Stay at home, especially if you're sick or with symptoms. Right. Then decide if your symptoms are getting worse, get medical assistance. If right. it's a slight uh, disease or symptoms, your physician might recommend you to stay at home with supportive treatment, like uh, taking uh, 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 antipyretics, taking plenty of fluid, uh, resting, um, doing this kind of supportive therapy we have for common cold or other mild infectious diseases. And he may or he may say, well, you are sufficiently symptomatic that you should go to the emergency room because you might need hospitalization. And that for that is that we are trying to prepare to have people that have been identified by physicians that go to the emergency room and need care. And we want to preserve our hospital facilities for patients that they really get sick. I understand. But there are doctors who have said they have requested a test but were denied. So my, 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 my question is, once the doctor requests a test, who is the one person person authorized right. to say yes or no? Right now, we don't require the uh, authorization of the epidemiologist as we requested before. Okay, so that's a big change. 
So the epidemiologist, okay, okay. Okay, okay that's what we are test telling you. We are not expecting the epidemiologists to say you have to have, of course, it's easier if the, uh, in this case, we are performing tests at the health department. It's easier if that uh, hospital or emergency room notifies the Department of Health because they have to get the uh, test tube and the, uh, the, for the kit for the testing. And then- But how, do you pri but how do you prioritize? You only have 50 tests that you're doing a day. So how do you prioritize if 100 doctors call you? Because we are in the Department of Health, as I was telling you, we are accepting calls from physicians that have patients that need hospitalization in the emergency room or the hospital. We are not taking requests from physicians that have patients that are ambulatory. Okay, understood. So the only way you're going to get a test in Puerto Rico right now is if you are hospitalized, uh, your doctor calls you, and you have symptoms that are not considered to be mild. Is that correct? Yeah, for the test being done in our laboratory. But that person may go to the laboratory, have a sample, and the reference laboratory will process it. If that reference laboratory has the capacity to do the test in Puerto Rico, for the better. If not, that reference laboratory will have to send that sample to the states. How many laboratories have the ability to test and send samples to the states? Right now, that's a reference test. And as far as I know, only four reference laboratories will get, you know, this happens daily. All laboratories in Puerto Rico have a contract with a reference laboratory. And there are like three or four that everybody knows. I'm not mentioning names, but everybody knows to whom I'm referring. So these laboratories, when they get a sample, they send it to this reference laboratory that is the one that processes it, either in Puerto Rico or in the States, because it happens with other tests. Okay, reference okay. Reference laboratories for genetic tests, for right. cancer tests. Right. Some of those, they, they process in Puerto Rico, and some they still send to the state. Do you have a process by which those reference laboratories, once they get the results back, can yes. notify you of yes. how many positive cases there are? Yes, yes. That's what we call the epidemiology vigilance. They are, there is a system where every laboratory that gets back a result that is positive must notify the Department of Health. As a matter of fact, there is a um, uh, email that uh, we have sent uh, a letter to uh, circulate to every laboratory that that's the uh, email to where they must send positive uh, test results because we need that to get the epidemiology data. And we need it not, okay, because right now we don't have much uh, epidemiology uh, specific information because we don't have many tests. So that will really enhance our ability to determine like where there are uh, hot spots uh, of disease and it will help us to try and reinforce vigilance or prevention measures in that area. That's usually how uh, epidemiology works with uh, epidemics. How many positive Maybe. cases? David, excuse me, you have three more minutes. Okay, all right. How many positive cases do you have on the island right now? Right now, positives is five for sure. Three of those were tourists in uh, ships. Uh, then the other two are where had contact with somebody from, the, from outside. We have nine negatives, and I think we have five that we are expecting results. I think three or four of those, we are still expecting results from the CDC, which has taken more than a week in giving right. us results. So, uh, you know, sort of wrapping up, what are you going to do to ramp up? I mean, 50 is not good. So what are you going to do to ramp up? Because you're sitting on an island. You guys are essentially stuck there together. You've isolated everybody in their home. Um, I, I, what's, I know you just took the reins. Uh, yes. So what, what, what are you going to do? I mean, 50, 50 is not a good number. Okay. Very important to realize that you don't need a laboratory result to start treatment of the patient, which is the important thing here. Physicians know that when you make a diagnosis of a disease, 
it could be flu, it could be coronavirus or any other, be it respiratory or whatever, a contagious disease, you need isolation and you need, in this case, not having specific therapy, supportive treatment. And supportive treatment when in the hospital means IV fluids, uh, um, antipyretic drugs or fever, uh, you may need oxygen, uh, you need a follow-up in the ventilation of the patient. And yes, ma'am, I hear, yes, ma'am, no, no, I hear you, but is, is getting more testing your top priority or are you basically saying to me it's not gonna happen? It's, uh, we, our priority is trying to get these references laboratories to help us increase the testing, definitely. As a matter of fact, one of these reference or this reference laboratory said they could even increase to 20,000 a day, which I really personally doubt, but it may be uh, a lot more than what we are able to do in laboratory and we will rely on that. Right now, they will have to send it to the states, but we hope that they validate their process and they may be in the next week or so be doing the test in the island, which would be of great help because it may mean that results may be back in 24 hours. Our right. laboratory is sending results in 24 hours. Good. Okay, so we're done. I'm going to call the CDC to ask them about the process of validating the positive control to let the laboratories here on the island start testing and getting results there. And I'm going to check back with your agency because I know you said you will ask the CDC, and I'm going to check back to see what you get on your end. Okay. Dr. Longo, nice to, nice to talk with you, and thank you for the time. Okay, thank you, and uh, I'm glad to inform the public. I know they have a lot of questions, and uh, it's difficult to answer all of them, but we are trying to provide the more information we can. It changes well, I, daily. I appreciate you giving us 30 minutes. Testing was the one thing people wanted to know, uh, the main thing, and so thank you for spending the time talking to us about it. Okay. Good luck to you. Yes, ma'am. Bye-bye.